Welcome to Introduction to Finance. Welcome to sec session six of Introduction to Finance on discounted cash flow valuation. Uh, in this session, we're going to talk about um, what happens if we have incremental cash flows versus session five, and uh, discounting and compounding th those incremental cash flows versus session five, where we had one lump sum cash flow. Uh, it's a very interesting and very useful and practical session and chapter. Um, we're going to look at several formulas. Um, first of all, present value of an annuity. What is an annuity? Uh, first of all, um, an annuity is the same amount each month, same amount each period, same amount each year. An example of an annuity in your life might be your rent, if you pay the same amount each month. Um, I gave uh, this equation some names so that you could uh, better relate to it. I call it the mortgage equation. You can use this equation to calculate your mortgage before you go into the bank. So if you have a uh, amount of money you're borrowing today, present value, um, what is the constant amount I'm going to uh, pay each and every month or each and every year um, in the form of an annuity on my mortgage? At what rate and for how much time? So we're going to go over that. We can also use this equation for student loan calculations. If you have a student loan and you know how much your student loans are and you know the rate of borrowing and the time period you want to pay off your student loan, we can certainly calculate that constant payment amount. Uh, same thing for car loans and same thing for credit cards. We can use uh, the present value of an annuity for um, these uses if, again, it's the same amount each month. If it's a different amount each month, we have to revert back to Chapter 5 and use present value, future value equation. Uh, the second key equation in this uh, session is future value and annuity. In this case, I rename this one, who wants to be a millionaire? Can I become a millionaire without a big lump sum that I leave in the bank, as we did in Session 5, uh, for 44 years at a certain percentage rate. In that case, it was 10%, and the amount was 15091 Not everyone has $15,000 sitting around to become a millionaire. And the question pops up, can I invest a little bit each year um, at a certain rate for a number of years and don't touch it? Obviously, those uh, three famous French words, ne touche pas, can't touch the money, and it will grow to a $1,000,000 in 44 years? And the answer is yes. We can put a little bit away each and every month and reach our go financial goals, be they $1 million, $2 million, or whatever. Uh, the third key equation is present value of a perpetuity. This is derived from equation one, present value annuity. A perpetuity is just an annuity that goes on forever, same amount each year, same amount each month, keyword being forever. Um, and this looks like present, uh, the present value of an annuity, uh, where T goes to a very, very large number, and you're left with C over R. Finally, the fourth key equation is effective annual rate. This is very relevant to your credit cards or perhaps to a, a loan you may take out where it says compounded blank, compounded monthly, compounded daily, compounded quarterly, compounded anything uh, more than annually will result in a higher effective annual rate. When you see the words compounded blank, you must calculate the EAR to see what you're really paying on that credit card or on that loan. So very key formulas. Again, we can use these formulas, uh, the first three, if it's same amount each year. If it's changing amounts, we have to revert back to session five and use present value or future value um, in that case. There are seven key learning objectives in this session. First of all, we're going to look at future values with multiple cash flows, cash flows that are changing, but then also cash flows that are the same. If they're the same, we can use future value annuity formula. Uh, we're going to look at uh, second learning objective, present value, uh, multiple cash flows. Again, different cash flows, but then same cash flows. And if they're the same, we can use the present value annuity formula, which is the ob uh, learning objective three. Uh, future value annuities, uh, number four, this is the case where we have an annuity, same amount each month, same amount each year. We're going to give you a formula and uh, play that game, who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, the fifth learning objective is perpetuities. What about an annuity that goes on forever? How do we calculate the present value of it today? PV, we remember from session five, means today. PV equals today. So what happens if that um, annuity goes on forever? That is a perpetuity. Um, number six, learning objective is EAR. If we have a credit card and it says compounded daily, compounded monthly, compounded uh, quarterly, we know we're going to pay more than the quoted or stated rate. How do we calculate that EAR? And finally, uh, three different loan types and loan amortization types, a, a pure discount loan, a um, amortized loan, and a uh, 
a bond, basically three types of loans and three types of loan amortization we're going to discuss in this session. Let's take on future values with multiple cash flows, objective number one first. I can uh, calculate these uh, in two different ways to calculate these future values. Again, I'm compounding out to the right, and I may have uh, a bunch of cash flows that are different. For instance, I compound each balance uh, one period forward at a time, or I can calculate the future value of each cash flow and then add them up. And I prefer uh, method number two, but you can certainly use either method and you should come up with the same answer. Here's some examples. Again, this session is heavily example laden and uh, we will go over these examples to uh, demonstrate the various concepts. Uh, you think you'll be able to deposit $4,000 at the end of each uh, year for the next three years into a bank account paying 8% interest. You currently have $7,000 in the bank today. How much will you have in three years and in four years? Now, Technically, we don't really, even though you have 4,000, 4,000, 4,000, we have 7,000 today and zero in year four. So we really do not have an annuity. So we have to go back to chapter uh, five, session five, and look at um, doing each one of these cash flows separately, one at a time, and compounding them out into the future um, to see what we have at the end of three years. So I draw a timeline. I'm going to, going to encourage you for all future sessions, we want to draw timelines when we have multiple cash flows. Uh, a lot of you are graphic learners and drawing a timeline will help. So I have 7,000 today. So I put the 7,000 at time zero, 4,000 deposited at the end of year one, 4,000 at the end of year two, and 4,000 at the end of year three. We assume that these amounts get deposited at the end of each year, uh, December 31st. So I take the first 7,000, multiply it by 1.08, and get 75.60 at the end of year one. On that $7,000, I drop down the 4,000. Again, it's going to gain no interest because I put it in there on December 31st. The end of year one, I have 11.560. To find out what I have at the end of year two, I multiply that amount, that summation, by 1.08, and I get 12,484.80. Um, Again, I drop down that $4,000 that I'm depositing at the end of year two on December 31st, and I get $16,480,480. Uh, multiply that by 1.08, and I get uh, $17,803,58. Uh, and I add the $4,000 to that, and I have uh, $21,803,58. Uh, if I want to see what I'll have at the end of year four with no deposit, I multiply that amount by uh, 1.08 and I get uh, almost uh, $24,000. So again, all I'm doing, all I've done with this is use concepts from session number five and project those um, cash values forward using future value equals present value times one plus R to the T.